So a quick review of radiation from the Sun. So the Sun sends energy out to the universe and when it reaches Earth the sunlight during the day is a mixture of visible light that we can see, infrared that's heat, and ultraviolet or UV. So you can see from this graph that we looked at last time the majority or a little over 50% is infrared heat, IR. There's also visible light, 39%. Both of those are harmless. Uh, UV, however, which is 8%, is harmful to living organisms based on exposure. UV energy is something we need to protect ourselves from, but we're lucky because Earth's atmosphere takes care of the majority of protection. So we can break down UV into UVA, UVB, and UVC. UVC is the highest energy and that's the most dangerous. UVC can break bonds in molecules pretty quickly and uh, long-term exposure to UVA and UVB can break bonds in molecules, but UVC is instant. So um, UVC we can have some beneficial effects by killing things that we don't want like coronavirus. We are lucky that we have the ozone layer in the stratosphere that is above 30,000 feet. We don't go there. It's um, a layer that has a maximum amount of ozone and it completely absorbs all of the UVC coming from the sun and doesn't allow us to be exposed to it down here on Earth. And it's not just us, but all living things. The other uh, forms of UV are lower energy, that's UVA and UVB, for which you do need to protect yourselves from. UVA, fortunately, is the lowest uh, energy of the UVs, and that's the most that we receive. And um, you can protect yourself from UVA and from UVB. There's some UVB that that penetrates down into the atmosphere, but mostly we're getting UVA. And um, you can protect yourself depending on the amount of melanin you have in your skin. Um, staying in indoors or shade is also a way of protection. Um, wearing clothes, sunscreen, sunblock, hat, sunglasses, all those things are needed when you're outside and exposed to UVA and UVB. Ozone in the stratosphere forms in the presence of sunlight. So that's energy, sunlight, energy provided during the day, creates ozone up there in the stratosphere every single day. Ozone is um, created and destroyed from oxygen. So what this uh, cycle shows us is the process starting with O2, this is oxygen, this is oxygen gas, and this is up there in the stratosphere. Okay, And this pretty much stays up there. So the Chapman cycle represents the set of natural reactions um, in the formation of ozone um, in which ozone is formed and also decomposes. Oxygen gas um, in the presence of sunlight and this is sunlight that provides UV. Okay, so sunlight that provides UV causes the oxygen molecule to break apart into two oxygen atoms. And this is 2O. And um, there's other oxygen atoms around. There's other oxygen molecules around. It's not only a single O2 and, or, and two individual oxygen. There's millions of oxygens and millions of oxygen atoms around up there in the stratosphere going through these reactions. So take one of those individual oxygen atoms here, and it combines with a different oxygen molecule, a different O2. This combination of O and O2 gives us this O3 that we know of as ozone. Okay, so this is ozone that's formed. This is up there in the stratosphere. And this um, ozone is up there until it gets hit by another bit of UV. And this UV does the opposite and this destroys or breaks down ozone. So this is ozone decomposition that also happens in the presence of UV energy. So this is a cycle that forms ozone and also breaks down ozone into oxygen. And then this oxygen can go there and start again. That's the cycle. Um, ozone also can, get, can be broken down when it combines with an oxygen atom. Okay, So this ozone uh, can combine with an oxygen atom and break apart into two um, oxygen molecules. And so overall, this is what's called a steady state condition that the ozone that's made is broken down and then it's made again. These chemical reactions all are occurring in the stratosphere every single day three 
times 10 to the 8 tons of ozone are created. And then the same 3 times 10 to the 8th tons are also destroyed or decomposed. Okay, And um, this is a dynamic system. It's in balance. There is no net change of ozone or oxygen in this process. So how do ozone and oxygen in the stratosphere protect Earth and everything on Earth from UV? Uh, let's look at this in a different light or a different way. Uh, ozone and oxygen. I'm going to write oxygen has this oxygen with a double bond to another oxygen atom. So this is O2 and this is the, showing the two atoms with the bond and it happens to be double, two bonds uh, between the two atoms. This is ozone. O3 is an oxygen molecule with two oxygens, a double bond, and then a single bond to the third oxygen. Okay, so this is O2 and this is O3. So what happens is that these UV photons are not quite the same as these UV photons. So these UV photons are a lower wavelength. This is compared to these UV photons that are a higher wavelength, 242 compared to 320. Okay, so a lower wavelength is inversely proportional to energy, so this is a higher energy. And a higher wavelength is also inversely proportional to energy, this is a lower energy. Okay, in terms of UV A, B, and C, the highest energy is UV C, and a lower energy UV from UV C is UV B. Okay, so what happens, changing colors, is that this UV B is a lower energy, and this lower energy UV B can break that single bond easily. Okay, so it can easily break the single bond. Think of it like breaking a board. If you have to break one board, a little bit of energy. But this UV C can break a double bond. Why? Because it has more energy. So think of it like breaking two boards, you're going to need more energy. Okay? And the um, UVC can break this oxygen molecule apart, and the UVC can also break a single bond. So this is the single bond here, the double bond here. This is UVC can break this double bond in the ozone, and um, UVC could also break this single bond, but it can be taken care of by UVB as well, okay? Because breaking a double bond means there's a high amount of energy, can do the double, can also do... So that UVC is completely... UVC is absorbed by ozone in the stratosphere. And this is by ozone and also by oxygen. Okay, how is it absorbed? By basically breaking the bonds in ozone and oxygen. And it breaks those bonds and then doesn't reach Earth because the energy has been put into these molecules. UVB is mostly absorbed. And this is mostly absorbed specifically by ozone. And this is all going on in the stratosphere. All before it hits us on Earth, more than 30,000 feet up, all of this ozone and oxygen is doing the work of taking up the energy that is the UV that would be hitting us, and it doesn't.